That is great. I haven't heard Kathleen say, talk that long in, uh, in, in 50 years. That's another story. Um, next on our list of, of uh, Cameron alumni, uh, we're going to have Thomas Pillow. Class of 1964, mechanical engineer, and I think related to one of the prior speakers, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll get to that point a little later. What have I heard? Okay, before I get started, just a couple of points I want to make. We talked about teachers. I won't talk, call them particular names. But after leaving Cameron, I've sit in a lot of classes, from graduate school, uh, professionally, in different companies. And I'll be, I'll be honest with you, I put our teachers toe-to-toe -to -toe with any teachers I saw after leaving here. I believe we have some of the best teachers that could exist. So I just want to, you know, hats off to all of our teachers. One in particular, I'll pick on Clarence White because my math teacher is Miss Ledette. And I love Miss Ledette because she overlooked all my faults. She, 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 I, she was a great teacher. Anyway, I just want to mention her name because I thought she was really good. Okay, but uh, I'm going to present the memorable events that illustrate how much Cameron and South Nashville influenced my life. And I picked out uh, three. There's no way I can cover. Cameron was part of my life started at the age of six. I lived in Napier Projects, and I could look diagonally from Napier Projects, and I could see Cameron. I went to uh, Napier Elementary School, first grade, but all the, some of the older kids all went to Cameron. And like any young kid, you always want to bet what big kids were. So starting at age six, I knew I was coming to Cameron. And I eventually got here to seventh grade. But the first big event that happened to me after getting to Cameron was in ninth grade. We had taken a better of aptitude test, and the you know uh, counselors call you in to have this conference with you to discuss those grades. And she asked me, well, "Okay, when you graduate from high school, what do you want to be?" And I had a limited view of the world and, and job occupations and opportunities. I told her I wanted to be an auto mechanic because I've always been fascinated with machines. And she says, "Well, you you scored real well on mechanical aptitude and mathematics. Why don't you consider being a mechanical engineer?" I stopped and I said, "Well, what's that?" I had no idea. She says, again, best teachers in the world are counselors. She says, here's a good answer. She says, mechanical engineer is like being an auto mechanic, except they make more money. <laughs> and I thought, I can do that. And that is literally where my career got started. A mechanical engineer from advice from a uh, guidance counselor. The problem was, I, when I left that discussion, I told some of my schoolmates that I was going to be an engineer no smarter than I am, the same age, right? They told me that I couldn't be an engineer because I was black. It's true. And the problem is, I bought into that to some degree, not completely, but to some degree, I was reluctant. I thought, well, in this ninth grade, I may, but between ninth, tenth, eleventh grade, twelfth grade, I had some anxiety about that whole concept. However, again, Cameron High School and the benefits, uh, the ninth career conference that they had at the school occurred around March of my senior year of school. And what they did, they brought in profess, I mean, professionals from different areas in, in different rooms. Where the, the room where they had the engineers uh, were, I, I went to that room. The speaker that came in that room was Dr. James Parsons, uh, head of the School of Engineering at Tennessee State. He was an engineer. He was also black. I sit in that room, you know, talking about uh, these career days and so forth. This is how important it is. I sit there and look, I don't, I don't know what he said. All I could get was, he's an engineer and he's black. Maybe I can be one too. And that's literally how I wound up in engineering in school. And, I, and I'll, I'll, I'll go forward with that one because it was a, 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 that was my life, a change of event in my life. Uh, I'm gonna give you two or three examples of what of, of experiences I had at Cameron. Uh, some of them I kind of make fun of myself a little bit, but it, that's okay. I can, get, I can get past that. My wife does it all the time. Okay, okay. The, the first one was, was uh, Dr. Elliott. He, well, Mr. Elliott in those days, he became Dr. Elliott. I had a chemistry class, and they required us to do science projects every year, uh, which eventually the best ones, that, I don't know the point when this changed, but we got to go out to Vanderbilt for the regional contest. So I, I, had, I hated that assignment. I did not want to do it. I didn't have the tools. Uh, I had nothing, nothing required elements to do a senior a class pro a project. Anyway, I did it. And it, it didn't even stand up very well with my boards and so forth. However, no one was more surprised than I was that I won first prize in chemistry that year. <laughs> it, 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 but but it, it, the key to this is though, the whole process required to do that project. The Kubota LX series. 
batteries built with comfort and versatility to outlast any I have used countless times as an actual engineer. As a matter of fact, two of my job titles were project engineer. <laughs> to this day, I still use some of the skills I learned in putting together that project. So as much as I hated it, the benefit that came from it is endless. It's, it's still going on today. Um, how about learning how to work under pressure? I'll give you a good example. Miss Elder came to me one day at the class, got in her class. She says, Mr. Pillow, I had an overdue notebook. She says, if you don't have that notebook on my desk tomorrow, you're going to get an F. I never got an F at that point in my life. I thought, F, worse than that, mama and daddy. I couldn't, that was the first time I ever did an all-nighter. I did an all-nighter, I turned in that notebook the next day. That's also when I learned how to work under pressure. And I have, lo have not lost that skill since. I did not get it. I don't know what my grade was, but I didn't get an F. So, so but that's a good example of how some of these experiences just carry through life. Um, read an assignment. E.T. Carruthers, another one of our teachers. Any of you have a, a, a literature, literature people? Uh, he gives us his assignments, 16 British literature, classics, and so forth. I'm not sure I finished even half of those uh, books. But guess what? He planted the seed, the literature seed in me. At the age of 40, I started reading those books. I've read every one that I can remember he ever assigned us and a whole lot more than that. To this day, one of the greatest pleasures I have in life is sitting down late at night and reading those classics and those books. And I've got a bunch of them. So I just want to say, you know, the seed was planted. Even though I wasn't a great student in that class, I'm lucky I passed. But what he said and did in that class and those who knew E.T., he had a passion for that stuff. And I felt it. The last one I want to reference is a, a program, which we had a lot of here at Cameron, in the school auditorium. They had a guest speaker that came in here. For those, this may ring a bell with some of these people. His name was A.G. Gaston. He was a millionaire from Birmingham, a black man. I had never seen, known or met a black, I mean, a millionaire my whole life. But the fact that man was a black man, I was mesmerized. And I'll tell you, he started speaking to this day I can probably quote you about half his presentation. I can see his face. And over the years, up until this day in time, I still quote to myself in my mind some of the things he said that day. And some very good messages about how to grow wealth. I mean, he was a, he was a, he was a giant as far as I was concerned. Uh, what's the result of all that? My previous results, uh, 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 you know, as a result of my time at Cameron, okay, education. I was able, with my foundation, I was able to leave here, get a degree in mechanical engineering. And I did spend time in student union. So I did wind up in the Army for a couple of years before I really got that degree. Uh, okay, <laughs> you know, a little detour. That's not bad. It sounds funny, but those kind of detours are educational life is experience. After that, I, I was able to go and get a master's degree in business administration. Career-wise, I spent a lot of years working for Fortune 500 companies as an engineer. Also, I spent over 40 years as a real estate uh, investor. That's because from the master's degree and that background and that A.G. Gaston conversation. Because the idea of money has never escaped me. I've always loved money. Uh, I believe, as a result of being a chairman, I have a strong desire to be a contributor to society. Just a couple of quick things I participated, participated in. I can't do them all. I taught uh, schools, elementary schools, young people on business uh, principles, elementary uh, engineering, and so forth. Uh, I volunteer at my church as a coordinator for a room in the end. So that's, that's the C. Hubbard coordinator over there. Things have been kind of slow since the COVID. Uh, the other thing is, and the biggest one I want to get to is, I, I am a, uh, a low-income provider of housing. Over the past 30 years, I've provided uh, housing to uh, over 200 families in low income. Now, I want to emphasize this. These are, most of these are Section 8 renters. Many landlords, if not most, will not rent to them. I do. And if you come to any one of my houses, I can live in one of my houses. I'm not a slumlord. These are, these are decent, nice, decent housing for people to live in. I think my responsibility is to provide good, clean, healthy, safe housing for, for these families. Uh, also, a lot of my renters are repeats. In other words, they moved out some years ago, called me because they, their experience was good. So I just want to pass that on. It, it's, that's the most uh, fulfilling piece of, of this that I want to say.
because uh, when you can affect the quality of life for other people, not just yourself. You know, if you just came here to get born, eat, and die, why did you show up? Yeah. You, you need to do something for somebody else. Okay, and last but certainly not least, Cameron is where I met my wife. Aww. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> who, who, who continues to influence my life to this day? Thank you. Aww.